This video will uh, contain some advice uh, when it comes to software development engineers applying for uh, jobs with high-performing companies, uh, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, and so on. Um, this uh, list is based on my, uh, my experience, also, you know, crunching uh, around 20,000 uh, uh, most commonly asked questions uh, throughout the years and also my, my coaching experience. Um, also, these videos are in the video description, so if you're just looking for the list, uh, there you go, there you have it. Uh, in this video, I'll focus on providing you these questions, of course, and a little bit of commentary on uh, why these questions get asked and how can you basically improve your performance uh, for, for these. Uh, the primary purpose of these lists are to help you to better train for the interview. Now, uh, without further ado, let's just uh, go to the questions. Uh, which I'll go through in uh, reverse order. In, uh, in other words, from the least commonly asked to the most commonly asked questions. The first category for a software development engineer is uh, relates to customer focus. Um, and the, the probably the, um, an interesting question here would be a time when you simplify something for your customers. Um, now, uh, if, you'll, if you'll take a closer look at this question, uh, Tamani simplified something for your customers. On one hand, there's the customer focus, and on the other hand, you know, there is the, the invention, the trick that you did. So you basically have to think here about your most interesting exp experiences or interactions with your customers, even if you are a recent graduate, you know, because most likely um, your, um, your customers were internal customers in this uh, scenario. So also keep in mind, you know, being a software development engineer, no one expects you to you no know, work on a regular basis with the end customer, but rather with a, in, with an internal one. Uh, the most common pitfall when it comes to these types of questions is uh, people uh, understand by customer focus, uh, customer support, when the customer has a problem and you fixed it. When in fact, you know, you should go one step further to, to think about customer obsession, right, while interacting with a customer. So this is the type of experiences that that uh, will uh, basically score the most points. Second uh, category is about, uh, it's about inventions or simplifications or learnings that you have in, uh, throughout your career. And um, one, one example question, was the coolest uh, thing you've learned on your own that helped you to better do your job? Or another example, uh, what's the best invention you had in the, in the past two years or in the last six months if you want? Now, these questions are not really hard, but they are tricky if you don't prepare for them in advance or if you don't get good uh, with behavioral interviewing. Now, uh, as an interesting quick anecdote here, I, I once had a candidate applying for a junior software development engineer and after the interview, I asked him for his feedback, how did it go? And he said, Dan, they asked me this weird question on what's my most recent invention. And uh, my answer to them was, uh, well, I won't tell you what's my recent invention because I don't want to spill the beans, you know, I want to capitalize on this one someday. So uh, now, needless to say, you know, when it was a terrible answer. Uh, first, primarily because, the, the, you know, he couldn't find something to say, you know, uh, something innovative that he, he thought about in, in the past. And secondly, you know, when you're going to a job interview, um, your approach should be that you want to do, you want to li literally go above and beyond to, to get the job, to do what, whatever it takes to satisfy your employer needs. Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, quality and uh, work ethics. Uh, a time when you refuse to compromise on your standards. Um, th this is also, you know, a time when, you know, you basically thought, you know, there was no way for you to get something done because you thought it was not good. Uh, now, the first example that comes to mind was for, for a guy that I coach uh, that had a, a visual impairment. And uh, his example for, for, for this question was while he was uh, working for a software company that was developing uh, a certain functionality, an app, I remember. And uh, at one point, because of some cost cutting ma measures, his manager asked him to remove the, the functionality in the app that uh, allowed uh, people with disabilities to easily to easier use the, that software, and he refused to do that. So that's why and that's an example. That's a great example when he refused to compromise on their standards. Or 
Another question here could be, have you ever missed creating appropriate documentation for your de deliverables? And uh, if you're a, a true developer, <laughs> uh, this uh, I'm sure this happened. So the trick here is not to lie, to, to admit that yes, it all happens because don't tell me that the first time you you wrote the Hello World application, you wrote documentation for that one. So it did happen. The, 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 the challenge here is to uh, admit it happened and you know to, to just be straightforward up front and basically show it as a learning experience. So the trick here is you know whatever behavior they try to test you, they can either test your positively framed question or negatively framed one. For example, with a customer in the beginning, the time when you went above and beyond to satisfy a customer, that's a positively framed question. Or a time when you screwed up with a customer, that's a negatively framed question, in, but that still uh, should be able to show on your, uh, on your customer obsession. Now, um, next topic uh, here is that of ownership. And the, the most classic, the most commonly asked question about ownership is the time when you sacrifice short-term results for long-term value. Now, this is a pretty standard one. I won't insist on it. You should basically take your time to think about when you, when you made these kind of trade-offs. Um, another example here was a time when you took the lead on a difficult project. And uh, here, you know, the question might not be as obvious, li obviously linked with the ownership principle, but you should think of it in this context. When you thought, you know, the project was in the weeds and you took ownership of it and, uh, you know, basically uh, get it all fixed it. You know, because it should be, after all, a positive ex experience. Now, from experience, people also have a tendency, rightfully so, in my opinion, to go into interpersonal skills when talking about these things, which is uh, also perfectly fine, you know, but you should just understand that the interviewer might ask you some follow-up questions that will get you back on the technical side of things. When you literally took ownership of the project, instead of you showing leadership and being a great communicator because they're interested in the ownership part, essentially. Uh, next uh, topic here is about judgment and analysis in general. Uh, are you good at working with data? And can you provide an example of this? Um, now, I'm sure you know as being a developer, you, it's inevitable you work with data, but uh, what's the most interesting example that you have while working with uh, with data? And here, you know, <laughs> probably I should start mentioning it, but the STAR method is what will uh, uh, basically make the difference ultimately because uh, as a developer, you're not really supposed to be good at behavioral interviewing, but if you, so you must at least fit into the template that the employer prefers hearing this answer into. So the STAR method, you know, the situation, task, action, results um, is something you should really consider using while providing your examples. Now working with data, again, it shouldn't be something very complex for you to say, uh, to find out here simply because this is the nature of the job. Uh, a more interesting question here was, would be a time when you had to quickly adjust your work priorities to meet changing demands. Um, this would be supposed to show your bias for action. And again, the more you think about uh, the best possible example you have here, the, the better your, your star answer will, will become. Um, now, the next one uh, also with analysis is also one of, on, on the more complex side of things. The time when you had to deal with an ambiguous situation, such as when you didn't have enough data to make a decision. Um, now, the, the, the trick here uh, is to think about the trick here, what the employers really want to, to see here your, is your, your judgment, your ability to be, um, to be right a lot in terms of leadership. So, you should really think of an example that, you know, where genuinely you didn't have enough data, and when you took the right judgment calls on a consequ, uh, you you were um, right a lot, <laughs> to, for the lack of a better expression, you were right on multiple calls that eventually allowed you to remove the ambiguity from that project and uh, uh, have it successful. Um, also, you know, unless you're asked for a failure story. Uh, as a, as a mid-level software development, development engineer, I would never go into failure stories. Why? Because it's too dangerous and that's usually an approach that, that more senior roles would only imply to highlight different behaviors. But of course, if they ask you for a failure, you must give them a failure. But if they ask you for a time when you had to work with an ambiguous situation, don't give them a failure, give them a success story, right? Like advertise yourself on your um, strengths, essentially. Now, the next topic, is one 
uh, if you remember, I said we'll go to the least task to the most task. So this next stop, next stop is actually the most commonly asked topic in the behavioral part of an interview with a high-performing company. That refers to your interpersonal skills, your working in a team, and your communication overall. Right, and these are the ones you know that are very tricky to spot from the question themselves. So that's why, you know, you require a lot of uh, a bit more practice on this. So that's why I'm including more examples of this. Um, tell me about the time when you convince someone of something. Right, so you use your convincing power. Right, so of course you know you show them the data, but there's the data and there's the interpersonal skills. You, how you listen to them, how you listen to them in order to earn their trust. And think of it this way, there's always, you know, the, 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 the theoretical part and the practical part of discussing with someone is the, the storytelling, if you like to call it like this. Uh, another example, a time when, uh, when uh, consulting with someone else helped you to identify or to solve a problem in a, in a program, in an application, if you want. Again, you know, you must showcase the, the approach that you took with that specific colleague to actually get unstuck, uh, because you know, I'm assuming um, unless you had a, a genuine issue or a genuine, um, a genuine difficulty in realizing whether your solution is the best for a program, you wouldn't have asked anyone anything. So, think about the challenging situation. You know, maybe when you get st ideally, people talk about here when they get stuck on something and they immediately call in for help. They uh, eventually had multiple rounds of discussions, you listen to them, they listen to you, you eventually had a couple of rounds and then you finally around to the, uh, arrive to the, to the best possible option here. But think about, keep this in mind, whenever someone asks you about working with someone else, it's about interpersonal skills for uh, software development engineers at mid-level roles. Um, the next one, uh, tell me about the team project that you worked on. Again, working in a team means working with other people. Again, interpersonal skills. And here you must think what's the best example you want to use while working in a team. And I know from experience that uh, developers ha are having a hard time picking the best possible projects here. So hopefully you know, you're going to be able to find it uh, if, you, if you know it in advance. But this is a pretty common, uh, commonly asked interview question. Uh, another example, um, a time when you made a mistake with a colleague and uh, this is a pure question about interpersonal skills uh, basically you know we all make mistakes so, so the first mis the first challenge here is to admit that you've done a mistake with someone and uh, from experience these uh, negative experiences are the ones that are not as straightforward as one would like to to be coming out from uh, from their experience so it's, it's harder for you to remember those in the first place because it's unnatural it's not that natural to remember your failures because you want to be positive and to have a positive approach in everything you do, right? But still, a time when you uh, did something uh, wrong towards one of your colleagues and how did you react, right? How did you react? Well, you know, don't forget about listening to whatever they had to say. Uh, don't forget about uh, regaining their trust, essentially. This is what the interpersonal skills are, uh, are mostly about uh, in, in your scenario. Um, a time when you had to work with a difficult coworker. Now, it doesn't have to be a time when you were wrong on something, but rather when you had a challenging working relationship with someone. And again, listening skills and earn a bit of trust. You know, it's, it's not like your best friends, you ended up being best friends or anything like that. Or it could be, you know, if I, if I think about it. But um, usually they, they want to see, the interviewer wants to see how, how, the, how the relationship evolved. And uh, often, you know, people make mistakes here that they say, well, they, they finally left the company because they didn't like me or, you know, whatever else. So don't think about them. The interview is about yourself, right? Um, and just one more um, about interpersonal skills. Uh, a time when you had a disagreement with your manager. So don't tell me you, you've never had a disagreement with your manager, even with your teacher if you're a recent graduate, but you, it's inevitable. Trick here is, again, to show interpersonal skills, how you listen to them, how they listen maybe to you and how you regain trust and you did not put the blame on them because the interview is all about yourself, right? So these would be some examples about interpersonal skills and I'm sure now you can take the time to, to brainstorm for more examples uh, on your own. Now, last but not least, you know, the most commonly asked questions by far uh, in, uh, 
In job interviews are the general types of questions. They could be entry points for a more technical conversation, uh, but the general types of questions are all something you will inevitably get asked. So th this is why you know, I believe they are the most, the more, one of the most important things you must repair on. And probably your preparation should start here in the first place. Um, what's your most recent programming project? Right, so here, you know, basically the, the, your best approach to advertise yourself is to be what's your most recent successful project, right? So if you have a huge, huge, huge success one year ago, but that project still trailed for a couple of more months, maybe you should use that one because that's the, the one you're interested in, right? Still, it's a general type of question that allows you to advertise on your strengths, right? So if you read a little bit through the lines on the general questions, you'll find something quite interesting. Uh, time when you set a goal and you were able to achieve it. Again, your most successful project, right? You advertise yourself. Uh, why do you want to work for this company? Now, here I'll link up, uh, something in the video description because it's a large, larger discussion how you want to approach it with some other examples and so on and so forth. But still, it's something that uh, might take you some time. Uh, and finally, tell me about yourself. Uh, tell me about yourself. Again, I'll put some links in the video description because it's a really long discussion. But if you really want to see these things, uh, then... Um, I'll make sure you have proper documentation here. So there you go. This will be the, the advice for your roles. Hopefully you found this uh, useful.